welcome back! Um, so today, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be making a video all about running a Depop shop. I have split the video up into sections by time, so if you are only looking for tips on one specific thing, you can go into the description box and just look for the header that you're looking for and just click that time and you'll be taken to the segment of the video where I talk about how to do that. So I have some notes right here, um, so if I look down a few times that's what it is, but a bunch of people always message me for uh, advice and tips and specific questions and I just thought why not make this video so you guys can just reference it. Let's start first, picking stock for your shop. What do you want to sell in your shop? Do you want to sell your own personal closet or do you want to sell vintage? Um, if you want to sell your own personal closet, then great. Okay, skip to the next section. If you want to sell vintage, is this recording? I'm going to make a separate video on how I thrift and find my stock and maybe take you guys around. I tried doing that and work out too well yesterday, but I'll try again. But I'm going to just say some generic tips and tricks on how to find vintage stock. So, and it doesn't have to be vintage. It's just like even modern stuff. Just cool stuff that you purchase with the intent of selling. So I get my stock from a few different places. The number one way people on Depop gather their stock and the easiest way I'd say, the most efficient way that, and the easiest way to grow your store at the beginning is to go to thrift stores. Thrift stores are speckled all over. So my tip for you is try out first all of your local thrift shops. Try them out and keep trying them out because different times and different days are better for certain stores. But the more you go, you'll probably discover that sometimes you'll go and you'll find a bunch of stuff and sometimes you'll go and you'll find nothing. That was not successful. You wanna find the best time that works for you. From my experience, I advise you to pick things that you really like. Basically, things that you would wear, even if they're not your size. Things that match your style. Things that you genuinely are excited to have and to sell because that really shows in your shop. Customers can tell when you're excited about an item, when you really think that it's worth their money to buy. Another thing I think is really important, especially for people who buy and sell clothing, don't buy clothing from the thrift store that you think might be from another culture. Now, I know this might sound strange because you're thinking, well, it's in a thrift store, you know, they donated it. The person knowingly gave it up for anyone to take. When it comes to reselling, I don't think it's right to profit off of clothing from someone else's culture, especially when you don't know how to wear it, where to wear it, what it means. Um, if this is your own culture, that's a whole nother story. Another method that you can explore when finding stock is going to estate sales and garage sales. Estate sales and garage sales are a great option price-wise. Also, you can look online before you go to an estate or garage sale and see what they're selling. I'll link some websites below that you can use to find local estate and garage sales. They occur at a certain time and date, often on the weekend. Oftentimes, they just don't have what you want, you know what I mean? A thrift store is more of an eclectic mix of stuff that you can pick through. Um, an estate sale is a very cheap but very specific group of things that belong to a family or one person. Now, let's move on to photographing the stock. I have used a few different tools in my time selling on Depop. If you've used Depop, I think, I'm pretty sure you have a smartphone. If you have absolutely no way to purchase any extra accessories, you can definitely get by just by propping your phone on any surface and put it on the timer mode. What I recommend if you have a little extra spending money or if you've started selling and you have a bit of profit, I highly recommend investing in both a tripod and a remote clicker. Also buying, if you're using your phone, uh, buying a phone mount. All of these things are pretty cheap, but it is a worthy investment if you're starting your shop and you really want to grow and, you know, have a nice professional look. So there are two ways you can take photos. You can take them outside or you can take them inside. So taking them inside is extremely helpful because you can change quickly, it's fast, you know, you can get through a lot of stuff. 
So if you want to shoot outside, I highly recommend shooting before 11 a.m. and after 1 or 2 p.m. Though if the sun is up at a lower angle, you can better light up your clothing and you know, so on. I used to shoot outside exclusively alone. Um, if you choose to do this, I don't recommend it. Um, I think you should always bring someone with you because it is a little sketchy, you know, to just go out into a random field and take photos and change. I used to change in my car. I, I don't recommend that, but if you do have some friends or someone you can shoot with outside, I, I do recommend that. If you're shooting inside and you don't want to buy lighting, I advise you to go next to a window and just have a nice natural light. Now if you have a little bit more money to spare, I highly recommend getting lights. Amazon sells very cheap lights. Here are some tips on setting up your lighting. If you only have one light, I suggest you place yourself or the object next to the window and then take your light and shine it on the from the other side so that light is coming in two directions and you don't see any shadows. If you can get two lights, that gives you the freedom to shoot anywhere you want in any room all the time. You can position the lights like I said before at a diagonal so they're shining from every direction and your items look really nice, professional, bright. I highly recommend that. Um, that is not necessary though. All of these fancy equipment, it is not necessary. You can definitely do it just with a phone and just with a self timer. But those things all kind of make things easier and speed up the process. Listing or posting your stock. I recommend you post once or twice a day near midday. Being featured on Depop is crucial to grow your shop. And you will be featured if you have good photos, good lighting, good stock, and post at the right times. If you post around midday when everyone is online, then you have a higher chance of being featured and therefore a higher chance of selling and growing. Most people on Depop scroll through the explore section um, and if they see a nice style or a nice photo or even a nice item, even if it's sold, they're likely to follow you because they want to see more of what you post. Creating the listings. Unfortunately on Depop you can only use four photos. I suggest having four photos. A front shot, a back shot, a side shot, and a close-up. Or you can do front, back, close-up, and flaws. When you write the listing, show your excitement for the item, describe when it's from, where you could wear it, uh, what it looks good with, describe flaws, and also put in measurements. I used to not do this. I used to just wear the clothing and guesstimate the size. Do not do this. I highly recommend you buy a tape measure. I suggest finding flat measurements because those are more accurate. And measure everything you can. Usual measurements, bust measurement, Shoulder to shoulder measurement sometimes is important for broad shoulders. Waist measurement, hip measurement, inseam, and rise. Inseam is the length of the inner hand to leg from the crotch to the ankle. And rise is the measurement from the crotch to the top waistband. Take as many measurements as you can because this will save you so much headache of people asking you the measurements all the time when you can just take them all at once and post them. Okay, now I'm going to move on to um, customer service. It applies to selling majorly. Uh, having good customer service creates loyalty and increases your reputation. It just makes you feel good. If people know you have good customer service, your life will be easier and you'll grow more. I highly recommend you make a post titled shop policies or frequently asked questions, something like that, where you list out rules and policies for your shop. In your policies, you're going to want to list anything that you think is important. Shipping times, how long it takes you to respond to messages, whether you accept holds, whether you accept returns. When it comes to holds, buyers want holds for two reasons. One, they want to hold an item because they're in class or they're at work and they want to buy it later. Um, so they only need just like a few hours of holding time and then they'll purchase it. And then there are holds where people don't have the money yet and they will get it at a certain time to pay for the item. A third kind of hold is the hold that you want to avoid at all costs, which is people who aren't sure about an item, but they want to keep it for themselves and make sure no one else buys it until they can make their mind. And I suggest returns. 
just from my experience, they've never caused me any problems. I haven't lost hardly any money from them. And I've sort of earned the trust of my customers knowing that they can send an item back if they don't like it. Returns happen way less often than you think because when people buy, they're pretty sure that they want the item, you know? And if you provide the accurate measurements, there shouldn't be a problem. But in some cases, people don't know their measurements or they just see the item and they don't like it or it doesn't fit, but it's totally optional because most people don't accept returns. So you've sold an item. How do you get it to the customer? I like to pack my items nicely before I ship them out. I make sure the item is clean. I make sure I roll it with a lint roller because I have pets and they shed a lot. Um, and I pack it up in tissue paper and have little stickers and stuff. That is optional, but I think I really do recommend wrapping it in something else before you put it in an envelope. Nice packaging is so important. Um, I've noticed when I started packaging things nicely, I got so many more good reviews and they all mentioned my packaging, most of them. Um, and so I think customers really do appreciate when you take the time to pack things nicely and it doesn't really take that long, so I suggest it. In terms of envelopes or boxes, so I like to use envelopes because they're cheap and they're small and they're easy to store. I have both flat rate envelopes and I also have just regular envelopes. You can buy irregular envelopes from Amazon. They have a bunch of different sizes and design. Or you can buy flat rate envelopes and flat rate envelopes are actually completely free. At most post offices they don't actually offer flat rate envelopes so you have to order them online. Um, but they are completely free and they're shipped for free and everything is free. Flat rate envelopes are also great for things that are heavier because they are the same cost regardless of the weight. I think as long as it's under 70 pounds. They're kind of small so if you have like a big jacket, I recommend just using a regular envelope. So every transaction made on Depop specifically are made through PayPal. If you're gonna be printing out a non-flat rate label, you're gonna wanna be able to weigh your item. I suggest if you have a little extra money to buy a postal scale or a kitchen scale and those can tell you exactly how many ounces your item weighs. First, what you wanna do is log into your PayPal. On the homepage, you'll find the transaction associated with what you wanna sh print the shipping label for. And you'll see under the transaction, it has a link with the words print shipping label on it. Click that. In the center, you'll see a bunch of drop-down menus. If your item is below 16 ounces, you're going to want to go to the second drop-down menu and click First Class Mail. In the Package Weight section, type in the weight. Calculate the shipping cost and then you buy the label. If your item is heavier than one pound, you'll use Priority Mail. If you're using a flat rate envelope, you can click Padded Flat Rate Envelope. If you have your own envelope, you can click package or thick envelope. Okay, the last thing I want to touch on is promoting your shop. Um, a lot of shops on Depop have an Instagram associated with their shop. No matter how big or small your Depop shop is, having an Instagram shop is a great way to be informing people of your updates without them having to log on to Depop. Because I found that most people are on Instagram like all day, but they're not so much on Depop all day. So if you list stuff, you can also let your customers on Instagram know and they can head over to your Depop and check it out. Depop allows you to put one website link in your profile, so a lot of people do put their Instagram for that reason. I also recommend socializing on Depop. Depop is a very social selling app. You can allow comments, you can message people with any reason, and I think it's a great community and a great way to meet people, um, and also a great way to grow your shop if you're making friends on there. People are super nice, I recommend you comment on people's stuff, you know, chat with them on Instagram, support each other, and just let each other know they're doing a good job or you like their new stuff, and you'll feel more supported, you have someone to rant to when, you know, an issue arises and stuff like that, so. Okay, I think that's about it for my tips today. Um, I hope you found them useful. Um, I plan to make a thrifting video soon dedicated just to thrifting and going through how I find stuff, how I find thrift stores, um, how I pick my stock, and when I go, etc. Just diving into the details of finding stock very soon. But if you want to see anything else, do let me know. Message me anywhere. Comment anywhere. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful.